Hello everybody, it's Ian McLaughlin. This is Hiroki Fujioka. It's your boy Jerson Sanchez. And we're doing the immune system project. So let's move on to the major functions of the immune system. So basically, the immune system is what defends your body from invading microbes and everything that could do harm to your body. These foreign invaders could be things such as bacteria, parasites, fungi, and viruses. And the, the immune system consists of millions of cells that pass information back and forth in response to invasion and produce chemicals in order to regulate cell growth according to the invasion. The major parts of the immune system include the tonsils, the thymus, the bowel, the bone marrow, lymph nodes, spleen, mucous membranes, and the skin. The tonsils are located at the throat and the palate, and so their defense cells come into contact with pathogens especially soon, and they're able to activate immune system very quickly as soon as any pathogens enter your mouth. The thymus is an integral part of the immune system. It's situated in the body behind the breast and above the heart, as can be seen in the graphic. It's responsible for maturing T cells, which are a large part of the innate and adaptive responses to be discussed later. The T cells learn in the thymus which structures on cell surfaces are self versus non-self as they patrol the body. Lymph nodes exchange substances like defense cells between the bloodstream and defensive tissues in the body. They also contain other defense cells to trap pathogens entering the body, triggering the production of antibodies. Mucous membranes are found in most parts of the body where pathogens could enter. They contain lymphatic tissue. The membranes prevent bacteria and viruses from attaching to the body. Mucous membranes can be found in the nose, throat, and genital areas. The spleen is situated in the upper abdomen, as seen in the graphic. It is responsible for storing defense cells that will be released into the blood, including macrophages, a type of white blood cell, and T cells. The spleen can be removed in case of emergency bleeding, and other parts of the immune system will take on the burden of its duties. Next up, the bowel. More than half of the cells that produce antibodies are found in the bowel. The large bowel also contains bacteria that make it difficult for other kind of pathogens and outside invaders from settling in the body. Bone marrow is the spongy tissue inside of bones. Most of the immune system's defense cells are produced here and then move into the bloodstream to other organs to mature and specialize. The skin acts as a first line of defense against incoming pathogens. It blocks most of the bacteria and viruses from entering our bodies without the rest of the immune system getting involved. Three lines of defense. The first line of defense is nonspecific protection. The second line is internal nonspecific protection. The third line is targeted defense. The first one involves everything outside your body. That includes skin, saliva, oils, tears, mucus, and microscopic hairs. These all destroy pathogens and microorganisms trying to grow on your body. The second one include white blood cells, inflammation, and specialized proteins. When the skin is penetrated, cells release histamine to allow blood flow in the vessels and that causes inflammation. White blood cells rush to the flame area to kill diseased, infected body cells. Inferon and antigen are specialized proteins that block virus reproduction and provoke the immune system to respond. The third one, targeted defense, includes lymphocytes, antibodies, and memory cells. It's based on acquired immunity, and antigens detect foreign bodies that activate T cells, which bind to the infected cells and induce apoptosis in those cells. On to the next part, the notable historic epidemics and pandemics. To start it off, the Black Death, it was one of the worst pandemics in history. It killed over 75 million people. The next one, polio, was an epidemic in the United States that killed 3,000 people and affected over 60 million people around. The next one, 1918 Spanish flu. This flu killed about 50 million people around the world. The next one, HIV slash AIDS. This pandemic is still going on to this day and has easily killed over 25 million people in 2011 and 36 million people in 2012. The last one, the Antonine Plague, was in the Roman Empire and it was the first noted occurrence of smallpox. And by the end of it, it had killed 30% of Rome's population. 
Next, how the outbreaks were transmitted. The first one, the Black Plague, that was transferred by rats going through China, the Middle East, and then Europe. Polio, it started by inadequate sanitation. Sometimes someone ate their own poop and developed polio. It's very contagious. So like, if you have polio, your mom had polio, your daddy had polio, your brother had polio, everyone got polio. The Spanish flu. This was an extreme case of flu virus. It dispersed through people moving goods along the Asian European route. During World War I, effective soldiers brought home the disease to their homelands and then they carried it around the world. Next one, HIV slash AIDS. You know this one, sex. It's very active amongst the gay and bi community. It's a hypothesis that this disease was either due to bestiality or physical altercation with the chimp. So someone either did it with the monkey or got cut by a monkey. Last one, the Antonine Plague. Soldiers brought smallpox or measles from campaigns in the Middle East to Rome. All right, on to vaccinations. So vaccines mostly consist of modified or killed microbes, parts of microbes, or microbial DNA. So putting them into a person's body basically tricks the body into thinking an infection has occurred, and the immune system attacks the false microbe, which prepares it for the real diseases because it's prepared to attack those kinds of diseases. In this way, your body is immunized against that specific microbe and subsequent attacks by that microbe against your body. Measles, mumps, and polio can all be prevented through vaccines, and researchers are constantly trying to figure out ways to prevent other diseases through vaccines. Working with other body systems. The circulatory system helps carry immune systems such as white blood cells around the body. This also increases the chance of finding a pathogen inside the body. The immune system works with the digestive system to kill pathogens consumed with food. Dead immune systems get digested by the digestive system. Now on to other organisms with immune systems. Plants use pattern rec recognition receptors to detect PAMPs or pathogen associated molecular pa patterns and DAMPs damage associated molecular patterns. Insects use plasmatocytes which are very similar to white blood cells. Bacteria use a defensive me mechanism known as the restriction modification system. Now on to fun facts! Insects do not have adaptive immune systems. Stress can hurt your immune system and can affect the way it works, including an increased level of cortisol, a steroid that is good in small doses. Too much of it can lead to decreased immunity. Sleep deprivation can affect immunity, making it more difficult to fight off infection. Allergies are false alarms in the immune system in which they respond to harmless allergens which they perceive as a threat. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. And this is Ian McLaughlin. This is Hiroki Fujioka. And this is Jason Sanchez. Goodbye. <laughs>